It's six o'clock on the 15th of October 2011. The news today. Around 3,000 people have marched to the London Stock Exchange in order to protest against social and economic inequality. The police have prevented these demonstrators from setting up a camp in the area, but a lot of them say they will be relocating to St Paul's Cathedral in the next few hours. It's two o'clock on the 17th of October 2011. The Occupy London encampment now numbers 150 tents and several temporary shelters. Spokespeople for Occupy London say their actions are necessary and they will be occupying St Paul's for as long as it takes. They say they will be providing a forum for anyone who wants to know more about the movement and its aims. They are going to hold lectures and seminars to discuss the need for social, economic and political reform. It's 12 o'clock on the 21st of October 2011. The Dean of St Paul says the famous cathedral is closing this evening due to the protest and he hopes the protesters will have left by the end of the month so it can reopen. However, protesters continue to arrive and the area is now overflowing with people and tents. Protesters say they won't leave because the camp is legal and can easily coexist with the cathedral. But can the movement and its ideals survive? We interviewed some of the protesters to find out why they are protesting and what they hope they will achieve. Well, I think the exposure of the City of London as being rather corrupt in its um, management. It always has been, but the public is now getting to know it for the first time, really. So, uh, I hope um, the whole thing will change. And what needs to change is, we invented capitalism in 1776 with Adam Smith and the wealth of nations, and he always said that it need government regulation, but unfortunately, successive governments have not really been able to regulate its excesses. I ask the same question, what will come of this space, this action in this community? Um, I've made films and I sort of put them out and I sort of think, are they going to make a, a difference? And you never know who's going to be watching or how they're going to be influenced. And I think that's, that's the thing that you've got to try and you've got to make an attempt at doing this. And, you know, to coin a phrase from a great film, um, just do it. I thought, see a disappointing history. And I was concerned for the young people. And I was hoping that after the two weeks that they've been here, they would have had a plan by now. I see no aim and I see no progress and I see no proper process. I see just good-hearted intentions to have a, a platform to voice their own concerns. In my view, there won't be anything. No, it will go down as a moment in history when there was a bright spark and somebody said, let's make a stand. This, I think, will just, you know, the cold weather will come, the police in the end won't tolerate it, the status quo will say, that poor, you know, the little dears, they've had this, say, get up and go, because from what I can see, they haven't got a plan and that will be their undoing. Well, you always go into these things expecting it not to work, because they rarely do, but it has worked. Hopefully, I mean, if it goes on for long enough, you know, it's real reform, real accountability, transparency, end of uh, investment banking as we know it, please, pretty please. It's nine o'clock on the 28th of February 2012. The last protesters have been evicted from St Paul's Cathedral and police say the last tent will have been cleared by the end of the day. Many protesters say they will be continuing their work from other areas of the city and that the voices of the Occupy movement won't be silenced for a long time to come.